Welcome to a spine-chilling battle between the spectral Nighthaunt and the brutal Chaos Warriors. The restless dead rise, seeking vengeance while the Chaos Warriors march forward, driven by dark gods and unyielding fury. It's a clash of ethereal terror versus raw, unrelenting might. Who will claim victory, phantoms of the afterlife or champions of chaos? Welcome to the Realm Wars Network. The Slaves to Darkness army is led by the Dark Master Belakor, who has one of the strongest war scrolls in the game due to his utility. A Sorcerer Lord accompanies him for an additional cast and the very valuable ward save that he can bestow on one unit. The main win condition in this army are the Chaos Chosen, who are backed up by a Mind Stealer to make sure they get to fight before their opponents, even when charged. A reinforced unit of Chaos Warriors with the Mark of Nurgle are one of the biggest roadblocks that this game has to offer. Their job will be to occupy an objective and make sure to never lose it again. A unit of Ogroids acts as a secondary hammer, and a unit of Furies will provide screening duties. The Nighthaunt army has been haunting the meta with their extremely strong battle traits for the past months. They have now received some adjustments to these rules to rein in their extreme mobility a bit, and we will see how these changes translate to the battlefield. The Nighthaunt opted for a very wide list with Lady Olinda, who can bring a lot of healing to the army. In total, 13 units take to the field, with two screens in form of the Chain Rasps, two hammers with the Reapers and the Blade Geists, as well as two combat heroes with Rykonor and the Wraith. The battle is fought on the Shifting Objectives battle plan. One of the three objectives will randomly be determined to be the primary objective, which is worth an extra victory point. The main challenge of this battle plan are the small deployment zones, which make it harder to score any battle tactics that require the player to be within the enemy territory. The Slaves to Darkness finish to deploy first and give the first turn to the Night Haunt. The primary objective is on the right flank. The battle tactic is to take the flanks. Belakor activates the place of power near him but fails and takes two damage. In the hero phase, Rekonor casts Shade Mist on the Harrows to make them harder to wound. Olinda and the Guardian of Souls do the same on the Reapers and central chain rasps. Lady Alinda then summons the Shyish Reaper manifestation. Belakor attempts to summon the Grave Tide but fails. In the movement phase, the Craven Throne Guard and the chain rasps on the far flanks secure the battle tactic. The rest of the army runs forwards to contest all objectives. Only Rykoner and the cavalry on the right side, holding back a bit. With no shooting or combat, the Night Haunt score 10 points. The battle tactic is to take the flanks as well. 
Lady Olinda and Bellacor activate their places of power for a bonus to casting. Bellacor again fails to summon the Grave Tide, but does summon the Purple Sun. The Sorcerer Lord fails to grant oracular visions to the Chaos Warriors, but does banish the Reaper Manifestation. Lady Olinda attempts to summon the Vault of Souls, but is unbound. In the movement phase, the Chaos Spawn and the Furies are securing the battle tactic. The Chaos Warriors use at the double to contest their objective. The Chosen and the Ogroids attempt to run far enough to do the same, but do not roll high enough. Bellacor stands behind the Chosen and Ogroids to support them with his Strike First Rampage if they get charged. The Mind Stealer rushes to support the Nurgle Warriors. The Craven Throne Guard redeploy two inches. They also use Covering Fire and take out a warrior. The warriors desecrate their objective but deal no damage. The Slaves to Darkness control only one objective and score five points this turn. The primary objective moves to the center. The Night Haunt win the initiative roll and choose to maintain the turn order. The battle tactic is Mark for the Grave on the Chaos Spawn. Lady Alinda fails to use the place of power and takes two damage. In the hero phase, Rikonor uses the corpse candles on himself. Lady Alinda casts Grief Stricken on the Chaos Warriors to prevent them from gaining any buffs. She then fails to summon the Vault of Souls. The Guardian of Souls attempts to summon the Mortalis Terminexus, but is unbound. Rikonor summons the Reaper. He then casts Shade Mist of the Chain Rasps. Bellacor tries to summon the Shackles, but is unbound. In the movement phase, the Craven Throne Guard move in range to shoot the Chaos Spawn. The bulk of the undead army sets up for an all-out charge on the Nurgle Warriors. The right flank holds further back, with only the Chain Rasp sent forward to delay the Chaos forces. The Chaos Spawn redeploys two inches but is still in range of the guard. In the shooting phase, the Spawn survives with two wounds remaining. Olinda shoots and deals five damage to the warriors. In the charge phase, Alinda and her forces surround the Chaos Warriors. The Chain Rasps on the right flank charge the Purple Sun. In the combat phase, the Mind Stealer fails to control the mind of the Reapers. Step by step, the Warriors are whittled down and it takes all Night Haunt units to kill all of them. The Purple Sun takes out three Chain Rasps.
decisively in control of the left flank but failing their battle tactic, the undead score six points. The battle tactic is attack on two fronts. The Nexus Chaotica has collected enough power points this turn to use Corrupt the Realms on the left objective and all units nearby take mortal wounds. Most of these fail to activate though and only six damage are dealt in total. The Sorcerer Lord summons the Shackles which also fail to deal much damage despite in range of several targets. The Sorcerer then fails to activate Oracular Visions on the Chosen. Bellacor fails to summon the Grave Tide and also fails to cast Demonic Speed on the Ogroids. In the movement phase, the Chosen set up for their big moment to regain the momentum for their team. The Furies set up as a screen on the right objective, while Bellacor claims the primary objective. The Spirit Hosts redeploy four inches to block the charge path of the Chosen as much as possible. In the charge phase, the Ogroids take on the Chain Rasps. The Chosen charge the Blade Geists and the Spirit Hosts. Bellacor charges the Central Chain Rasps in the combat phase. The Mind Stealer makes the Reapers strike last. The Chosen activate first and use Heralds of Ruination to fight twice this turn. A single Chosen is in range of the Guardian of Souls and takes him out. The other Chosen split their attacks and kill two Spirit Hosts and the Blade Geists. The Chain Rasps deal two damage to Bellacor. The Ogroids kill the Chain Rasps on their side. The Cairn Wraith destroys the Shackles. Bellacor takes down eight Chain Rasps. The Chosen use their second activation and pile around the Spirit Host to get into range of Lady Olinda. They take down the Lady and the Host. The Reapers then pile into the Chosen and deal 11 damage. At the end of the turn, the central chain rasps die to the desecrated objective and two more reapers leave the field as well. Bellacor and the Chosen gain a bonus to hit rolls from the Eye of the Gods. The Slaves to Darkness mount their comeback and score 10 points this turn. The Nighthaunt win the initiative and go into turn three first. The primary objective would move to the right side, but as underdog, the slaves force a reroll and the primary stays in the center. The battle tactic is to slay the entourage by killing the Ogroids. Rykonor casts the Wraithstorm on the Furies and takes them out. Bellacor attempts to cast Binding Damnation on the Reapers, but fails. Bellacor uses Rally to heal four damage. In the movement phase, the Cavalry sets up a charge on the right flank. The Haridans and Banshees will take on Bellacor.
In the shooting phase, the Craven Throne Guard deal one damage to Belakor. In the charge phase, the Cairn Wraith charges the Chosen to give them strike last. The Banshees also charge the Chaos Chosen and the Reapers do the same. The Hex Wraiths and their hero charge the Ogroids. In the combat phase, the Mind Stealer controls the Reapers to make them strike last as well. Belakor's Rampage, the Deadly Trap triggers as well and gives him Elf and the Chosen strike first. In total, this means that the forces of Chaos can still activate before the Night Haunt. Belakor takes out only three Haridans. The Chosen go next and take out three Banshees and all of the Reapers. The Hex Wraiths deal eight damage to the Orgroids. The Purple Sun deals two damage to Reconor, who then kills the Orgroids. The Harrows deal five damage to Belakor. The Wraith kills another Chosen. The Night Haunt control all objectives and score 10 points. Even though they are taking the lead in the points, the Night Haunt see their forces dwindling rapidly, with Belakor still having his Dark Master ability available and no real threat to the Chaos chosen, the undead forces don't see a path to maintain their points lead and decide to concede. Losing Lady Alinda early was the crunch point of the game. If she manages to avoid the Chosen, she is very capable of healing back a lot of wounds and to keep the Night Haunt army fully fueled. We hope you enjoyed this battle report on the new Battle Scroll and hope to see you back next time.